Welcome to another episode of Spirit School with Danielle Serenk, also known as the Squamish Medium. Glad to be here. I am so glad you are here as well, whether you are catching this as the download drops or later on in the month. Uh, the Spirit Message episodes continue to be the most favored on the podcast, so I'm super happy and energized to continue doing them. Uh, first and foremost, would love to just thank all the people who left reviews this month on the podcast. Um, I think it was four or five podcast reviews that were left, and I'm just so extremely grateful for those. They actually really cheered me up. I get a monthly email from some sort of podcast metrics company I don't remember signing up for <laughs> and they show me all the new reviews every month that's all I'm really looking at is oh I wonder if anyone left any new reviews so I do enjoy reading them I appreciate them very much um and what else kind of happened yeah we had a lot happen in the initiation circle also just want to highlight the initiation circle for the month of November we have some exciting things happening we have a shadow and chakra workshop hosted by concrete and crystals we also have a manifestation and crystal workshop happening with Malibu Medium, and we have a lot of other activities happening within there this month, so definitely come check it out. Uh, links below if you're interested in joining this amazing community. There's almost 100 amazing, incredible light workers within that community making really beautiful connections and really launching their careers in a very supportive space. It's been incredible to witness. We are, I think, 14, 15 months in now as a community together. Some people have been with me since the very beginning, and it has been an incredible honor to watch these women flourish into who they are today. And I'm just super happy to be a witness to that. Other than that, I'm taking most of November off. So no mentorship, no classes. I have the angel hour, which is gonna be Archangel Raphael. And so that's going to be happening on Friday the 5th. So again, link below if you're interested in joining us. That could be the last one for a little while again. And all the replays for all the angel hours, which we've done Archangel Michael, Uriel, Gabriel, Haniel, and now Raphael. And they will all be up on myspiritschool.com as well. So just a couple announcements to kind of get out of the way at the very beginning. Lots happening. Um, the initiation, as you know, too, is going to be happening in January. So that wait list is going as well. I get DMs about it every day. So next year I may run it three times because the demand for it is just so high. So I'm really excited to teach that again. And let's get on to your spirit messages. So October, I don't remember what I said. Of course, I never listen back to myself and they do come pretty channeled these um, spirit messages. And so I just kind of trust that those who will be drawn to listen to this will receive something that resonates with them within this spirit message episode. So October was tricky for me personally. I went through a lot, a lot of changes, a lot of kind of, I would say tower moments and a lot of um, recovered and undiscovered power. So it was a very big month of big changes and when I tune into the energy and I went for a really big walk, an hour long walk before I hit record and started contemplating with the world of spirit, like if there is one word that comes forward for us for November, what is it? And very clearly the word change came through. And a lot of people don't love Scorpio energy. I personally adore Scorpio energy. It's transformative. It's darker. It's deep. It's intense. Uh, I am a Scorpio rising. So that may be why I love Scorpio energy so much, but because we will be spending a big portion of the month of November in Scorpio energy, there is going to be a lot of shifting and changing happening. Now, some people love change. I personally love change. I don't like it when things stay the same for too long. I get a little bit bored. I get a little bit disinterested. But there are a lot of people who see change as being unsafe. So you need to kind of take a temp check with yourself at this very moment. How do I feel about change? Because nothing is going to be staying the same. 
<laughs> and I feel that November is going to be a big month for change, whether the change actually occurs in November or the initiation of the big changes in the life start happening in November. Because one of the things that they have brought me is nothing can stay the same. We are changing every single moment. We are aging every single moment. We are getting closer to returning home every single moment and nothing ever stays the same. And so I feel that if you have really struggled for the past year and a half, as we have kind of navigated as a collective, a global pandemic, we've had to go through a lot of change continuously. And for a lot of us, I feel that this has primed us for what's to come. And it's also shown us very clearly the areas of life that we're really desiring these big changes in. Now, for some of you, that is going to be around career. For others, it is going to be around your relationships. For me personally, like when I look forward to like what big changes am I looking for? I'm looking to restructure my entire uh, business next year. I'm going to be restructuring everything that I do. And I actually am taking two weeks off in November just to re-envision and reimagine and get really passionate about what these changes are going to be for me, as well as um, the potential clients that I'll be attracting. And I'm also looking forward to a big move. I want to look to relocating my family. And so there's a lot of change kind of coming up in my world. And Spirit always uses my references of what's going on with me to say, you're not alone in this. There are other people going through this at the exact same time. So again, you have to assess yourself where you're at and where you're at with your level of comfort of change. And I'm pretty good at it. So I welcome change at any opportunity. Uh, but for some of you, you may be digging your heels in the sand a little bit. So when we look at how to implement these changes, one of the things that um, my spirit team is bringing me is around the power of putting pen to paper. They're making me feel very much that whether you get a daily journal going or ask yourself some really deep questions, one of the deep questions I've been prompting myself and asking myself when it comes to all the changes I want to make within my business and my career is, does this still inspire me? Am I inspired doing this? So if you want a journal prompt to look at different areas of your life where you might be feeling a little bit discontent or you might be feeling like you want to make some bigger changes, maybe just go into a self-inquiry around that. Does this inspire me? Does this relationship inspire me? Now, keep in mind, it doesn't mean you have to up and leave your relationship because all relationships are work, including the ones with our significant others and including our friends. And so you just have to take a temp check on where you're at. Does my career inspire me right now? Is how I'm showing up as a mother inspiring for me and my family? Or are we just plugging away letting day by day by day tick by. So this month, while we retreat inside, because Scorpio energy is very deep, very, very, very deep, we're starting to feel that pull inwards as we start to move into winter here in the Northern Hemisphere as well. There's going to be a lot of internal dialogue. There's going to be a lot of internal chat about, do I like it here? Am I happy here? How can I either make this situation happier or how do I change this situation in the first place? Like, how do I even like change this situation? So there's going to be a lot of chaotic energy that comes up around this. But I don't want you to see it as chaos. It's just going to feel chaotic because it's going to be very confusing. And depending on where you're at with, you know, building harmony between you and the way that you talk to yourself, that will also be very determinant of how people will roll through this month. So for people who have a very unkind inner dialogue or a little bit of a louder mean girl may struggle a little bit more than those who have really kind of cleaned up the energetics behind why they berate themselves and why they have unrealistic expectations of self and continue to remind self of everything you are not or everything you do not have. So those who have a very positive, not mindset, but an internal dialogue may move through this month with greater ease than others. So just keep that in mind, you know, pay attention to how you talk to yourself. It's so important. And, and as long as I have been doing spirit messages, this continues to come through. 
So it's obviously still a problem. I can't say it's not 100% solved for me either, right? I spend a lot of time alone. So there's a lot of time to talk to myself. But um, this is what's coming through as an initial inspiration for the November spirit messages. Now, of course, I did pull my cards from my absolute favorite deck, um, which is the Psychic Tarot with John Holland. Love it. First deck I've ever bought. And it's the one I continuously leave on my desk and have by my side. And I will tell you, there was not a bad card to be pulled. Okay. So I'm just going to take you through my interpretation and my inspiration in order of the cards that I pulled them because they kept coming. And this is a, a tough love deck. This isn't a, I'm going to tell you what you want to hear deck, but keep in mind the changes are not always bad and they are uncomfortable. Okay, but you have to roll through them there. There's nothing that's going to stay the same after November. If you're attracted to listening to this, the initiation for the big changes in your life that you are wanting to make, it is prime and optimal time now to do this. Okay. So the first card, and if you're on YouTube, you're actually watching the cards that I pulled in order. Um, if you're listening on the podcast, if you ever want to see my face do this, I do post these uh, monthly on my YouTube channel. So also linked below. Um, but the first card I pulled was the universe card. And this was a card of the creator. Uh, my friend Amber Malibu Medium, who is teaching the um, crystal and manifestation class, who, by the way, Sorry to digress here, but two people this past summer, she gave a custom crystal grid to to purchase their dream homes. Both of them, I know personally, were struggling really hard to find their forever home. Did this crystal grid manifestation that Amber recommended and both of them found their homes the same month. So after we shared this in the initiation circle community, I approached her. I was like, we got to do a workshop now because we got to figure all this out because I'm looking for my next home too. So anyways all that. But what she says about um, the world that we live in here is that this is the world of creation and creativity. And when I pulled this card, that was the first phrase that came to my mind is really understanding that even through the changes that we experience in November, even though they're uncomfortable because change for so many is just discomfort uh, wrapped into one word, is that we have to remember that we are creating our experience at every single decision. So what you experience is a creation and manifestation of every choice that you make, the process behind making those choices. And just see this as a very empowering card that you actually get to create what you want based off of every decision that you make. So never forget that you're the creator of your experience in this life. And there's not a whole lot that's outside of yourself to um, create, right? So we don't have to just stand by and let life happen to us and around us. This is taking life by the horns and starting to create the life we actually want to live. And so a little reminder here from spirit that we are the creators the next card, the destiny card. So again, I feel very much that we're not messing around. Time feels like it's speeding up. I'm not the first to ever say that. Things are moving a lot quicker than they once did. Maybe that's a thing of getting older, not so much globally or you know, as a race, as humankind. But maybe as we get older, we realize that time goes by a lot faster. But more and more people are having that self-inquiry and that self-exploration around what's my destiny? Like, what am I doing here? And the potential for this month and what you create and how you handle this change, it could lead you closer to what your destiny could be. But I will say I'm very skeptical to say that we only have one thing that we're going to land on. That's our destiny. I think right now what I'm living in being a full-time medium and mentor is my destiny. But I also have been shown other things that I'm going to be doing that aren't mediumship readings that are also part of my destiny. So it's not like we're looking for that one thing. It's just what's the next thing, right? And then what's the next thing? And that's how come we can't get lost in that energy of discontentment because of the way that we are and the, the world that we chose to incarnate in is a creator's world. There's always going to be something else. So we keep having this um, energy around a destination and there is no destination. 
It's just what's coming up next. So whatever your destiny is, that's like literally the way they're showing it to me is like, it's just a few inches away is based off a lot of the decisions that you do and do not make within this month. And you might get to closer to your destiny, but keeping in mind that whenever you reach that, and I'm putting that in air quotes, whenever you reach that next destiny, I'm just going to use it because that's what the card's saying. There is going to be something else and there's going to continuously be something else. So please break any illusions that when you reach this, everything's going to be fine and all the desires and dreaming will stop because it doesn't, you just reach a next level and you're like, okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? Because we get excited about creating, right? It wasn't until I entered spiritual entrepreneurship that I actually considered myself to be a creative person because I love the creating of all the different things, which is why things continually see change within my business. So let this just be kind of a lesson for you that just because you think you know where you want to be, once you get there, you are going to want that next thing. So get used to that. Some of you might not like that, but it's true. <laughs> There'll be people who will be making comments on this saying, you're right. Yes. There's always the next thing. So instead of seeing it as discontentment, which I used to see it like that, it's like, no, nope, just keep re-envisioning, re-imagining. Let's just keep going. Okay. So the next card I pulled out was the new beginnings. Now this is a really powerful card. This is a card. So there are some of you who will be literally making big, big, big shifts in this month. Um, this is an uprooting. This is big moves like cross country moves. This is the severing of long-standing relationships, whether those are friendships, uh, relationships with employers or relationships with significant others. There is such a yearning and such a pulling as a collective for something new to happen in their world. And that is ripe for November. So this is a very empowering card. This is the card of faith and trust where you just need to know that because you felt that pulling and made that decision to kind of start over that the next cookie crumb will continue to come once you answer the first one. So this is the journeyer that doesn't need to know the next de destination. They actually have realized that they're here for the journey itself. And that is life. There is no destination. It is all about the journey. So we need to really slow down and start appreciating the journeys that we're on because this is all there is until we go home is the journey. So I think a lot of people will be waking up this month to that. And my gosh, the level of joy and love you could experience in your life with that knowledge and know alone could be life-changing for someone. Again, guys, the cards this month are phenomenal. Again, change is not bad. It's good gets you to where you need to be next. And the next card I pulled up was the positive movement forward. So this is heading off into the sunset. This is a financially abundant card. Um, because I'm taking almost all of November off, I'm not expecting it to be a financially abundant month, but maybe that this will be, who knows? We just have no idea. Um, I won't be selling anything, so we'll see what happens, but they are making me feel that this positive movement forward is connected to finances in some way. So uh, I get the feeling like a lot of you will be pulling out budgets or something or forecasting for next year or even planning holidays. I get the sense that there's going to be some people who are looking to get away earlier in 2022 and starting to look at the finances behind that and starting to feel the abundance behind that and starting to say, I have all these savings. I'm going to go have an experience with them. And I personally, I was just talking to someone I was giving a reading to earlier that there's actually more financial abundance that comes when you're having fun in life. So I'm personally trying to incorporate a little bit more fun in my life because I definitely don't do that enough. But overall, this card for the collective and for those who are listening to this, you may feel like you haven't made it that far, but spirit is here to remind you through this message that you have made it further than you can comprehend. You're actually further along and you are making a uh, great headway towards where you want to be. And so this is just a little bit of a reminder card for that. And I do feel that there's going to be um, finances tied to this. Okay. Positive movement forward. And then the last card of the month I pulled, I just had to stop there. I was like, I'm blown away. I'm like, 
I want this month for myself. So I hope all of this comes true. And I hope that this is all true and resonates with you guys. But it's the card of awareness. This is a huge spiritual awareness card. So I personally, in my own natural cycles, and I'm sure I've mentioned this before on the podcast more than once, but every winter I do tend to retreat a little bit. I serve a little less. I slow things down. I tune within, I sit in the power more often, I journal a lot more, I focus more on my own spiritual connection with my ancestors and with my spirit team. And when I come out around February to start serving again, it's like I almost have like new tricks up my sleeve, you know, like these kind of breaks are really good. And what spirit brings to my awareness around this card being pulled for the month of November is I feel like a lot of you are going to be answering that call to sit more in the silence and to tune into yourself a lot more. So this is going to be less of a, a busy month when it comes to um, activity right? It might feel busy with all the change that's kind of happening, but more or less, it's going to be a month of slowing down. So a lot of you will reap and have beautiful spiritual experiences this month. If you do slow down enough to tune into yourself, as well as tune into your spirit teams and the ones who are around you guiding you. They're also bringing me journaling again with this. Look, I'm not the biggest journaler. So it, it's it's not super common for me to make this type of recommendation, but funny enough, last night I was going through some stuff. I, I have a condition called PMDD. I'm getting a little bit more open about it now. I was diagnosed with it a couple of years ago and um, there's no care for it or anything like that, unless I want a hysterectomy, um, which I'm not going to do at 39 years old. But uh, every month when the cycle comes around to have the PMDD come out, it can be quite chaotic for me to the point where I can't teach, I have to cancel my sessions. And I've been learning to kind of like live somewhat a normal life with this insane condition that again, there's no cure for. And last night I was having like a really hard night. I was having a really um, pick on Danielle night, just picking on myself. That's pretty much it. And the funny thing is a spirit last night really guided me to sit down and pull out my big, big journal and say, write it all out. Tell us everything. And I just started journaling just everything that I was going on in my mind and all the things I was picking on myself about. And the sentence came out. It was like almost like automatic writing where it said, the here and now is all there is. Now I have heard that before, like now is all there is or something, but it was like a really profound moment where I stopped after paragraphs of like just building up energy around everything that's not going great in my life and in my practice or in my business or in my relationship or in my health. Health is like a really big thing for me right now. Um, and the second that that wrote out, it really snapped me out of that cycle that I find myself in the pick on Danielle cycle, which I'm sure, especially the women who are going to be listening to this will probably resonate with this, the like inner mean girl. Um, and I looked around and I had this moment and it was a very spiritual moment. Like these are the type of spiritual moments I'm talking about. And I was like, I'm sitting here on a comfy couch with incredibly comfy clothes, sitting in front of a cozy fire with a hot cup of tea and a journal and all is well in my world. And it really kind of made me excited about the prospect of doing that again, because again, I'm not much of a journaler. I don't really have tidy writing. Um, I can't read my writing. And I suppose I think it's pointless to write if nobody's ever going to read it after I die because I can't read my writing. <laughs> but it was a very therapeutic experience, which offered me a very deeply personal and spiritual experience. Ooh, that was a lot of P's and X's. <laughs> That's going to be funny. I don't listen back, but I was like, that might be funny to listen back to. Um, so this is kind of what spirits bring into my awareness around November is like, if you do take the time to honor that inner yearning to slow things down a little bit and process things, maybe in a different way than you're used to, there are spiritual experiences to be had, right? We walk around all the time, like, but she talks to her guides like that and they don't come to me like that. And I've been asking for a sign and a sign hasn't come. 
Like, have you slowed down enough to like notice your surroundings? Have you slowed down enough to tune into yourself and ask the inquiry to spirit instead of me or anyone else? You're like, yes, why haven't I seen my sign? I remember one time I was driving home from work and it felt like, you know, before I, I removed the word disconnected from my vocabulary, unless I'm talking about like the internet being disconnected or something like that. I removed it from my spiritual references. And before I had the awareness to do that, um, I felt like I hadn't felt spirit around me for a long time. And so I was feeling disconnected. And I remember spirit popped in with a thought and they said, you'll never see eagles if you don't look up to the sky. And those are my cars on the highway. I drove all the time. I looked up and there was like three eagles swirling above my car. And that was such a beautiful teaching for me. It's like they've been there all along, Danielle. You just haven't looked up to the sky in a long time. And so let that be a teaching for you out there that there are spiritual experiences happening around us all the time. Every moment is accessible to us. But we just need to learn to like listen with our hearts a little bit more, listen with our souls a little bit more, listen with our spirits a lot more than our humanness. So hopefully you do get to have a few beautiful spiritual experiences, whether they're with me or on your own. Um, yeah, I really hope that you enjoy these spirit messages this month. I really enjoy doing them. Uh, let me know what resonated with you. You can message me on Instagram. I will say that my assistant is helping me with my DMs on Instagram because the volume has been very, very high. But do know that we will be very clear um, in our communication if it's me or her because our both both of us are named Danielle. <laughs> so she sometimes refers to herself as the other Danielle. And I'll be very clear if it's Danielle Squamish Medium. But do know that it's like, I'm not so big. I'm not answering my DMs. It's just, I get so many and I love receiving them that she can help me answer some of them and leave me the ones that um, I can answer. So let me know how this episode resonated. Share it on Instagram. Tag me at Squamish Medium. If you want to leave a review, they really lighten me my day. When they come through, they just make me smile. And so I do read them all. And I think that um, I'm very grateful for the people who leave it. There, it's not like some marketing trick. Like I think people think like, oh, if you leave reviews, like the algorithms or it shows that you're established. For me, they're just nice to read that. Like, you know, this is a free offering I do. I don't monetize my podcast. I've had the opportunity to monetize it a few times. But this is just something that I want to give to free um, out there in the world. And so it just kind of makes makes it worthwhile for me. I'm just like, oh, people love it. That's awesome. So anyways, I love you guys. Uh, see you in the next episode. I uh, don't know when that's going to be or what it's going to be about, but um, there's some tricks up our sleeve that my podcast editor, Andrea of Concrete Crystals, can't recommend her enough. She's actually one of my students who attends all my classes. And she had the great idea of um, making some of my classes into podcast episodes because the experience of me is very different when I'm teaching versus podcasting because podcasting right now I'm on zoom. I'm looking at myself. Like it's really kind of weird, but when I'm in a class, like there's so much energy that's like co-created and what comes through is really based off of that energy. So some of the podcast episodes you will be getting will be a lecture series, which is a new series I started on spirit school. Um, so I have the spirit school um, reading series right? Spirit School sessions. I'm going to be having the Spirit School pod or lecture series coming up too. So some of those podcast episodes might drop in November as well. And if you are a light worker who is drawn to my podcast because you enjoy what I've created with my life and my business and stuff, let this be a really good message for you. Because if I could go back and do this all over again, I would have created more chunks of time of not serving. So how I've kind of scheduled it now is I will take two weeks off every couple months, two weeks together off. And as an entrepreneur, you're never not working, but those are times where I'm not seeing clients and I'm not teaching classes. And I can't recommend enough that you do things like that for yourself so that you can be of an energetic space and capacity to be able to do the work that you really want to do. Okay, let that be a really big lesson for you because we need these breaks. 
And we actually need them more than when we were in our nine to five corporate roles, right? Because when we run our own businesses, we care so much about creating something that is long lasting, that makes great impact. We didn't care that much about our jobs. No offense to all the jobs I've ever had. I've cared, but not that much, not as much as I care about my own business and brand. So it's very important that we take care of ourselves and that we do put boundaries up. I got to tell you, I had to establish so many boundaries in October um, that made me feel really powerful. So you need to have these boundaries, whether they're around your time, your capacity, your calendar, um, even having the DMs was a boundary I had to kind of put up because I was like, I can't, I can't physically answer all these. And then I always feel like I'm falling behind. So to put a boundary up around that and boundaries might hurt other people's feelings, but you have to honor your own energy. You always got to kind of put on the air mask first, right? You got to take care of self first. So if you are new to spiritual entrepreneurship, let this just be a little lesson, a little teaching that you want to look ahead at your calendars every month and every couple months and, and schedule time in, even if you don't feel like it, even if you feel so energized, put a week or two in every couple months to take completely off to recharge and replenish. Okay. So November is going to be a very replenishing month for me. So also another thing notice, and I think because there's a lot of skepticism I read online about people who do spirit messages or energy forecasts. If I were truly reading from like a personal diary of my experience, I would have talked about replenishing or taking time off, but I didn't because the spirit messages that I do have the intention behind them. Spirit knows who's going to be listening to this. So what do they need to know? And that's what the spirit messages are more for, for you guys, the ones who are going to be drawn to listen to this. I don't know who you are. I welcome you here into the space. Spirit clearly knows, and I trust that you got something out of your experience here today. So sending you my love. We'll chat in a few weeks and have a good day.